Hi there, welcome to Fluffy Jellyfish. Today's video is going to be an introduction to my animal family. I really love the All My Pets videos that you see around YouTube and I totally wanted to make my own. So this video is that. I thought it would be a really good introduction to my channel and to everything I'm going to be talking about on it. So if you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button because you'll be seeing a lot more content like it. So if you're new to... Sorry, I was a pigeon. If you're new to Fluffy Jellyfish, hi, welcome. My name's Chloe. I have been passionate about animals all of my life, and more recently I've started to work professionally in animal care. So I'm a cat sitter and independent dog walker, and I also started volunteering at the local Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Centre. And I really hope to turn my passion for animals into a career. So I started up Fluffy Jellyfish as a way to share my animal learning journey with you. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button and follow me. I think I've asked you to do that twice now. I'll just keep saying it. Subscribe! Anyway, without much further ado, let's meet some animals. So first off, we're going to meet Piku, the Syrian hamster, and we're meeting her first because she was up and about while I was walking through. And her ears are a little bit curled back because I think she's still a little bit sleepy, but she was awake when I woke her up. When I She was awake when I woke her up? She was awake when I walked through. I think she was just grabbing some water, so I'm only going to keep her out for a very short time while I introduce her to you. So Piku is a Syrian hamster. She is a banded cream black-eyed Syrian hamster. Where are you? Yeah. So Piku is just over a year old. She's about 14 months old. We got her from Pets at Home and she was a little bit of an impulse buy, which I would highly recommend not doing. Um, She's basically my first pet as an adult and the first pet that I bought with my partner Stuart. And because I've owned hamsters as a child, I just thought that I knew what I was doing and I took some bad advice from the pet shop. And yeah, I made a lot of mistakes with Piku and I think I'll make a whole video about that and basically what not to do when you're buying a new pet. Um, because while I love Piku and while we do now have the correct cage size for her. We did make a lot of mistakes when we first got her. So yeah, I think we should do a video all about that, shouldn't we, Piku? You can tell them how much of a mistake I made. But she's adorable and I think I'm gonna pop her back now because she is very sleepy. You wanna go back home? Go and do your hamster thing, whatever you were doing before I disturbed you. Back home, back to bed. Little hamster bum. She's so cute. She really is such a joy. I love, I love Piku. She is just such a cute little thing. So tame, so lovely. I just love her. She's adorable. You're not gonna go back to bed? Mm -mm. I don't have any food for you, I'm sorry. You get fed later on. Oh, she's decided to go into her hammock. Maybe that's why she got out. Sometimes if she's a bit hot, she goes um, out of her big house and she'll go into her hammock so I think that's where she's gonna settle down just now. So we'll leave you to it Piku. Night night! So the next one I have for you is Maru and Maru is a Romborowski hamster. I'm gonna come say hello Maru. Now as you can see Maru is a lot smaller than Piku. She's tiny and her name comes from the Pokemon Togedemaru because I think she looks like a little hedgehog and Togedemaru is a little hedgehog in Pokemon. Do you not want to see the camera? She keeps turning back red. So Ma Maru is a Roborowski hamster and we got her from the adoption section of Pets at Home. So for those of you that don't know, the adoption section of Pets at Home is a charity and the money that you um, pay as an adoption fee does not go to Pets at Home but it goes to the charity so you're not supporting the unethical breeding of rodent mills. <laughs> You're not supporting the unethical practice of rodent mills if you choose to adopt pets from the Pets at Home adoption section rather than buying from the shop itself. So Maru had been brought back because she was being bullied by her cage mates, which is a little bit sad, and she was underweight so we put her in a cage all of our own. Maru is not the most handleable, the handleable, handleable? She is not as easy to handle as Piku because she's so small and she's really really fast so when we take her out, we take her out in a storage tub with some toys in it and we hold her over this if we're playing with her and interacting with her just in case anything happens. Whereas Piku I trust not to run away like that because she's not quite as quick and she is a lot more docile whereas Maru's can go from being like cute and on your hand to being really really speedy all of a sudden so I always take her out in the tub 
just to make sure that nothing happens. But she's an adorable little thing, aren't you? Tiny! She's my fluffy little jelly bean, aren't you? <laughs> Look at her adorable little whiskers. Ah. If you could not try and jump off my arm, that would be great. <laughs> Maru is in Aguti Roborovsky and I think I'll just insert some clips here because she does not want to stay on my hand at the moment. Would you like to go back into your own cage, Maru? I think so. Back to bed. Come on then. I'm gonna go into my hand. No. Nope. Into the cup then. Okay. When we were first taming Maru, we used a cup as her method to get in and out of her she cage. It was a little bit skittish when we first got her, so it was much easier to put her in and out with the cup. There you go. Back to bed. There we go. Back into bed. Night night. Next up are the rat boys. We have 10 rat boys and as you can see I'm sitting in front of their cage just now. All 10 of our boys are named after dragons as you'll soon discover. So I'm gonna show you each rat and tell you a little bit about them. So this first boy is Haku and he is one of our original four that we got from a breeder and these four are about 14 months old. Haku is a Dumbo Hooded Aguti and he is the alpha, the leader of our mischief. He can be a little bit grumpy at times, but he is mostly just a little bit mischievous and likes to bite our toes, which isn't always appreciated. <laughs> but we love him really, even if he is a bit of a nibbler. Next up we've got Falcor. Falcor is Siamese. And he's also Dumbo, like all four of the original brothers are all Dumbos. Falcor is our potato rat. <laughs> he's a little bit lazy and he is a bit of a chunky boy -o. And he's probably not the brightest, although we love him because he's very sweet. I think he looks like a little polar bear, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Next up we have Drogon. Drogon's probably one of our biggest rats. He is a black rex and again he's a Dumbo. He is a little bit skittish and can be a little bit shy, but he's really really warm to us and is quite affectionate now. He tends to lick our faces and hands, which is really sweet and it's nice to see him come so far. Um, again, like Falcor, he is a bit chunky, one of our bigger boys. Unlike his brother Smaug, this is Smaug, he is also a Rex, but he isn't a Gucci Rex, and again, he is a Dumbo. Smaug is tiny, well, he's not as tiny as our smallest rat, but he is very small, and he is a little bit shy and can be a little bit skittish, but again, he is really friendly and loves to sit on our shoulders. He loves to escape onto our shoulders to escape the other Rex, because sometimes he can be a little bit afraid of them, and he likes to screech at them sometimes, so... He takes refuge when he can. The next four are all top-eared and they're all hooded. We have two black ones and two grey ones. And they came from a rescue page on Facebook. Uh, um, the girl we got them from, they were her brothers and he could no longer take care of them. So we, we rescued them from her. And first off, I'll introduce you to Alduin. Alduin is probably our most affectionate bio. He is very lucky and if yeah, and surprisingly, he's my favourite, but don't tell the others, you're not really supposed to have favourites, but I do love him. He is a really good boy. Um, he's been affectionate from day one. The first day we met him, he was straight up onto our shoulders licking us when the other ones were a little bit scared, but he has always been really affectionate and really tame. He is just, yeah, just a joy. Um, next up is his brother Diabal, and Diabal and Alduin are almost identical. Uh, we can tell them apart through temperament, Alduin's obviously very lucky and outgoing, whereas Dive a little bit shyer. And while he's really tame and quite lovely, he's, yeah, not, not quite as affectionate as Alduin is, so we can tell him apart that way. The next two are Horntail and Mushu. So Horntail has a grey stripe all down his back and Mushu's not quite as grey, he's more white, so that's how we tell those two apart. Horntail's very affectionate as well, although he doesn't like being stroked back, so he will come over and give you lots of licks and lots of attention, but as soon as you try to stroke him, he's off again. So it's a very one-sided relationship with Horntail. Mushu is a little bit skittish, but again, he's warmed us a lot since we first got him, and it's really nice to see his progress. And he, both um, Mushu and Horntail are chunky boyos. They are, they are getting a little bit podgy, so we're probably going to try and put them on a little bit of a diet. 
Um, they seem to eat a lot more than the other guys, so what we'll probably do is keep them back for a few minutes while the other guys eat and then pop them in so they don't eat quite as much. So the last two are Spyro and Fafnir and they did come as a three. We did have three of them originally rescued again from a girl who couldn't take care of them but unfortunately recently one of our rats passed away. His name was Puff and he unfortunately passed away from a really nasty respiratory infection. So. We really miss Puff and sad that we couldn't do more for him. His brothers Fafnir and Spyro are still both really healthy and doing well. We think they probably have genetic issues which is potentially why Puff didn't manage to fight the respiratory infection as they're both a lot smaller than the rest of the boys and they did have a little bit of hormonal issues when they were sort of hitting rat puberty. Um, but now they seem to have come around and they are a lot better with each other now um, and they've integrated themselves into the group really well but as you can see Fafnir is tiny compared to the other rats and Spyro is quite small as well Fafnir is a um, hooded cream top beard and Spyro is hooded beauty both of them top beard so I hope you enjoyed meeting all of the rat boys and getting a little kind of tour of their cage as we went around and met them all. I really, really love owning rats. They're so dynamic and they are like little dogs. So people that don't like rats, you really need to meet some because they are amazing little creatures and adorable. I mean, look at them. They're so sweet. How can you not like these little faces? They're just so cute. There will definitely be more of these videos to come. I have lots of ideas for rat videos. So please subscribe if you want to see more of them. And if you want to see more of these guys as well, because they're so cute. <laughs> next animal. So next up we have the sea monkeys. They're perhaps not the most exciting pets in the world, but I really love them. I just find them really fascinating to watch, and I know they are simple little shrimp, but they're just, yeah, I don't know, I just find them really intriguing. I plan to have a few more sea monkey tanks, and I will be keeping you updated with them in one of my series all about sea monkeys and reviewing different tanks and seeing which kits work the best. So this is just the standard, or the original sea monkeys, and it's been going really well. I think we're on week 25 of me having this, and I think I've got two adults left. And I have seen a few babies about, so I'm hoping to get my second generation up and going. But we'll see. I mean, I know a lot of sea monkey tanks don't quite last this long, so I've been really lucky so far. And hopefully the babies will grow older and I'll end up with more adults and they'll keep regenerating, but we'll see. Um, so if you're as awesome as me and love sea monkeys, then be sure to hit the subscribe button because I'll definitely be doing a lot more sea monkey videos in the future. This is Gamora. Gamora is my giant rainforest mantis. So I got Gamora at the Midland Entomological Fair last December. I got her as a sub-adult and she has molted once since I've had her and this is her in her final form. Final form? <laughs> it sounds like a Pokemon. This is her as an adult and what she will look like. Um, she should, she's about seven months old now and they live from nine months to a year so hopefully I've still got a good amount of time with her. But she is, I suppose, a bit of an older girl now. Um, I really love owning her. I find her really beautiful and she's really interesting to watch. Oh, sorry. She just likes being up high, so she'll walk from hand to hand, which is quite interesting. Um, uh, one odd thing you might notice about Gamora is she's got big black spots on her eyes. And this isn't part of her natural colouring. It's called eye rub and it's something that mantises do in captivity where they just are really nosy with things that are going on around them so she'll constantly be looking out of the glass and it'll rub against her eyes. Luckily this doesn't affect her too much it just makes her eyesight not quite as great as it would have been but luckily mantises have five eyes so are you licking me? <laughs> she just licked my finger which is a bit weird. Um, <laughs> So yeah, luckily mantises have five eyes, so she can still see and catch her prey, and I hand feed her most of the time anyway, so that's not too much of a problem. I really, yeah, I really enjoy having her as part of my animal family, because she's just really unusual and awesome. I'd quite like to get some different species of mantis in the future, because 
I just, yeah, really fascinated by them. I find them really interesting. So I'm gonna pop her back now and I'll film some close-up shots of her so you can actually see her in focus. My camera really struggles to focus on her, so apologies for that. Pop you back now. See you later, Gamora. Oh, I should have mentioned that when I first got her, her cage was quite small, and you'll see that in my entomology vlog. Um, and as you can probably see now, I've upgraded her enclosure to something much bigger and much better suited to her. And that video will be coming up soon of the cage upgrade, so please subscribe and you can check that out. Do you want to get off my hand, Gamora? Unfortunately, I'm not part of your house. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna take, come on, last, last foot. There we go. Off and away. So next up is the most recent addition to our family. These are giant African millipedes and we have four of them. I, I will admit that I can't tell them apart but we have given them names so they are called Obsidian, Onyx, Spinel and Jet so they're named after black gemstones and yeah while I can't tell them apart I still thought it was important to give them names. So we got these guys at the most recent Midland Entomological Fair and I've got a whole vlog about that and I set up the enclosure so that'll be coming soon, so make sure to hit the subscribe button to check that out. And these guys are nocturnal, so they're sleeping at the moment, so at the moment he's curled up and looks a bit like a poo. At this point in time we haven't been able to sex them, as I've not been able to get a clear image of them from beneath. Basically you sex millipedes by their legs, or well I suppose their genitals, but you count to the seventh segment and the females have just normal legs whereas the males have gonopods. Oh and you've just pooed on my arm. Thank you. Oh he's just pooing all over my arm so I think I'm gonna put this dude back because that's a bit nasty. Yeah I'm gonna go deal with this before moving on with my video I think because that's rank. You're not gonna get, you're just gonna stay on my finger now just while it's covered in poo. It's really nice of you, mate, thank you. This is the glamorous side to pet ownership when your pet poos on your hand and then won't get off. Oh well, at least he's comfortable on there now, I suppose, after he's had his big poo. Yeah, you can see it like it's dripped all down my hand. Millipedes also release iodine in their poo and it tastes nasty so basically stops predators from eating them. But when they're comfortable with you they stop. So now he's stopped, he's comfortable on my hand. Do you want to get off though because I really need to wash my hands. There he goes. Hi! Thanks for pooing on me. Quality content there for you guys. Being pooed on by a millipede. And now he's gone. Yeah, so that's the chaos over. You've met all of my animals. I really hope you enjoyed meeting them. And if you did, please hit the subscribe button because you'll definitely be seeing more content like that in the future. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos of Alduin licking my face because I feel that that's probably going to feature quite highly on this channel. This is what it's like owning rats. My mom's going to watch this and be horrified. Do you not want a rat bath? You can also follow me on Instagram at Fluffy Jellyfish Chloe and you can follow me on Twitter at Fluffy Fish Jelly. Blah. It's too hard to say all of that, but I really need to work on my pronunciation. Anyway, until next time, take care of your pets and always remember to recycle. Much love, Fluffy Jellyfish out.